Nice to be with you guys. And uh, Ronnie and I spent part of our off seasons rehearsing for the baseball season. Excuse me. Here's the pitch, a swing and a foul back, and it's 0-1. Wow. Back to you, Lynn. You know, you know, Pat, I can see that. I really can. But that's the cool thing about radio broadcasters is you do have to paint that picture, and you have to bring that ballpark into our minds, and, and you do it in such a vivid way and, and, and in a way that baseball fans who know what baseball is like can just picture it and live it without having to see it. It's an I, amazing thing. Marty, I just had a, a segment with the three Hall of Fame guys that are here, Rhino, Andre Dawson, and Billy Williams. And, you know, we started out talking about it, and at the end, they started talking about our broadcast. And the first thing Rhino said is, as the game gets started, and he's coming to the ballpark to do the post-game show. He was going over the description of what Pat would say to describe Wrigley Field and what goes on on the field. And, you know, as a, as a player, you know, we would hear that some, and Pat and I have been friends a long time. Is there anybody better to describe what the atmosphere, the look, the green grass, the trousers, the... The color of the cap to my partner, it's just as good as it gets. Well, uh, just doing my <laughs> I mean, job. Just, just, and he didn't even pay me to say that. <laughs> but I will now. But no, it, that's simply the job. It's Broadcasting 101. I learned from a guy by the name of Bill King, uh, who has passed on. He was the voice of the Oakland A's, the Oakland Raiders, and the Golden State Warriors back in the day. And he said that he tried to be the eyes of the listeners. He right. wants them to be able to see the game through his words and descriptions. And we, Ron and I, and every announcer gets letters and emails every year from visually handicapped fans. Uh, they cannot obviously watch any television. That means nothing to them. So they rely on the radio for their Cubs fix on a daily basis. And I will tell you, those letters are some of the most special letters that a broadcaster will ever receive. They are so sweet, they say, I don't need to see the game because your words allow me in my imagination to see what's transpiring. And, and I almost get emotional thinking about it because I love getting those letters. Let me, yeah. ask, let me ask you this, what is it about the game of baseball that makes it the perfect sport for radio? Uh, I mean, we all listen to sports on the radio, uh, but I, I think baseball has a, a special connection with people who listen on the radio. I'm not sure what it is. Yeah, I think there's quite a few things, and Pat would probably be able to speak to this better, but I think part of it, the pace of our game, and it allows a broadcaster to, like Pat said, to paint that picture. Um, as a young kid, you could, you know, you can envision the pitcher coming to a set, right? You could envision all these things, and, and I do believe the pace of the game, but also I think our game just lends itself. It's, it's been going on for so long that it's been on radio that I think people, people really do just love hearing and closing their eyes and envisioning the friendly confines, right? right. I, I, I know I do. I feel like uh, sports in general are one of the healthiest forms of escapism. Everyone has problems. You want to get away from your problems when you turn on Cubs radio, I don't want to cause any more problems. I want to take you into a different realm. And Ron's laughing. Maybe sometimes I do cause problems. No, I was going to say Coob Dog is the guy causing but problems. No, I, I, I honestly believe that. I know as a, as a fan, and I was a fan for a long time, and I'm still kind of a fan, although I'm a big league broadcaster, I find myself sometimes just wanting to turn on a ball game. I turn on music for forms of escapism, and Lynn and Marty, you guys certainly can appreciate that. I think baseball and football and basketball are no different, and hockey. Fans just want to escape from their daily troubles for a few moments, and if we can take them out of those troubles and, and make them feel good and happy and maybe even make them smile or laugh, then we've done our jobs. We're talking with Pat Hughes and Ron Coomer at the Cubs convention here on 93XRT. And, you know, we're talking about painting the pictures and making it all so vivid. The chemistry between a broadcast team is a very important thing as well. Now, Pat, for many years you were with Ron Santo and the, the chemistry and the act that you guys had together, just unbelievable, right? And 
coming, uh, inviting uh, Ron Coomer to come in and, and, and be that new person. For you, Ron, that had to be a, a difficult uh, thing to do. Was it a, the challenge? I, I don't know if difficult was the, was, is the right way to describe it. First of all, what Pat and Ron Sano had, you know, Ronnie was a friend. Pat was a friend of mine. You know, I'd go to dinners with Ronnie. We were two third basemen, right? Yucking it up with a little red wine post game sometimes, right? I mean, <laughs> you know, the legendary dinners with Ronnie were incredible. So we were friends, you know. And, and so for me to come back to Chicago to the Cubs, um, this is my hometown team. So that was great. To have my phone ring and have Pat call me and talk about the possibility of doing this job, I was just, I was, yeah. Oh, wait, we still got to figure out, am I going to get the job? Right. <laughs> we got a contract. I was like, sure, yeah, I'm in. And, you know, there's family too, you know. But. Well, and you also have to consider your uh, your career as a rock and roll DJ, which yeah. you've also done. Yeah, that was easy to figure out. <laughs> you can keep your day job. I don't need it or want it or can do it. Well, uh, but, no, I. you know what? When you talk about chemistry and things like that, was it difficult? It was, it was I was a little on edge doing it at the beginning. But Pat is, is so good at what he does. And, I, you know, I, I know, Pat, take your headset off for a second. He's so good at what he does, and he's so nice. And he's so generous on the air for what is being said um, that you just don't find that a lot in our game. And I think, you know, us being friends earlier and enjoying each other's company has really, you know, I think kind of blended things in together. And now, you know, we've had four years, and... It's a good time to be a Cub right about now. Yeah, yeah I right. Say that. Well, you know, Ron, you, I, I was just going to say, you've both been extremely generous with your time over the years with us on WXRT, coming over and talking to us from uh, your regular gig on the Score Sports Radio 670, that we appreciate you taking some time on a very busy day, Cubs convention, to come here and talk with us. And I can't wait to get in my car, turn on the radio, and try to guess from the tone of Pat Hughes' voice, are the Cubs ahead or are they losing? <laughs> uh, sometimes you can tell, you can just tell, oh, he's exasperated, something bad just happened. Uh, and sometimes you just have to ease into the game. Well, and you certainly make the game go down easily. And I do love your uniform descriptions. I think that's one best. of the highlights, yeah. The and and with, uh, with the teams wearing so many different uniforms, I mean, you have to get creative with that. Yeah, Cubs in their home whites with those familiar blue pinstripes all over. Blue hats, <laughs> sleeves, numbers, socks, those are all blue. Dark shoes and dark socks. I'd pay to hear that. <laughs> well, thank you, guys. We really appreciate it. Thanks, We're live man. from the Cubs convention Thanks, on 93XRT. Marty Lennon is myself.